Thank you for joining us on In Business today. Now, Australia has one of the highest numbers of mobile phones in the world per capita. And being such an evolving and sometimes fashion-based product, what do you do with the millions of phones thrown out so that others can keep up with the Joneses? Mobile Master is one program which has identified the need to create a recycling program for mobile phones. And the recycling manager at Mobile Master, Rose Reed, joins us now in the studio to tell us more. Rose, thank you so much for coming on In Business. Thanks, Bridie. Great to be here. Firstly, let's just have a look. How many phones are there in Australia? Because I know myself, I've got a, a couple floating around in the odd drawer at home. Well, firstly, the number of phones in use is probably over 19 million. You know, we have a very high saturation of mobile phone use in Australia. And then probably 70 to 80% of people probably have at least one old phone at home. So we add it up and that's about 16 million phones sitting around in cupboards and drawers. Some are spares, some, well, some people have four or five. And um, as you say, you've got a few too, I imagine. Yeah, and then some of those really old big ones, you know, that you used oh. to use five years ago. So. Yeah, we definitely have a couple of keen collectors as well. Oh, great. Mm. Okay, then. Find out a bit more about that in a moment, though. How, how do we compare with, with the rest of the world in in terms of mobile phone ownership? Oh, well, in, in terms of saturation, like Europe, we're, we're very high saturation levels, so most people have a mobile phone. Yeah. Whereas in the developing countries, you know, the saturation levels are more like 20 to 30 to 40 percent, but are rapidly growing. And from a mobile phone industry basis, that's where the major growth will be in the developing countries across Asia and Africa and South America. Yeah. What generally happens when, when someone is done with a phone? I mean, is everyone like me and just throws it in the drawer? Or? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we're, we're all great hoarders. I mean, they're small items. We, we get very attached to them, you know. There's a lot of personal you know, connection with them in, in some way or another. And um, what we find is a lot of people will actually keep them. Probably 80% of people will keep their phone. They, some may actually pass it on to friends, you know, mum passes it on to the daughter or son or, or actually the son passes it up to the dad because he wants the latest mobile phone because the kids are probably the most um, avid collectors of, you know, upgrading and getting new phones and, and probably young males are probably the most people that turn them over. So it's quite and, and quite quickly, because I know, yeah, you, you often see because they are coming out yeah. with such new, fabulous phones We've, constantly. It's yeah, we find that um, people turn them over probably on average every 12 to 18 months. Um, it seems to have levelled out at that they're not turning them over more frequently, and that's part of that's because of the teleco um, plans you buy. You know, so that sort of drives. You know, most most phones are tied to a contract, and so therefore get turned over with that. The prepay, the turnover is probably a bit higher. Um, and maybe more closer to the 12 month. But yeah, most of them actually end up in cupboards and drawers at home, which is great in one respect because they're not ending up in landfill and in the rubbish and going to waste. I mean, that's really important. They don't end up there. It's far more important to get them recycled because they've got lots of great materials that can be recovered. Yes, yeah, so we're going to be finding out all about this in just a moment. First though, why is it so dangerous to have mobiles just lying around uh, that, that you shouldn't just throw out in the, in the garbage bin? The, I mean, there's nothing dangerous about having a mobile phone at home. It's actually a very safe thing to do. Um, what's important is if you do throw them into rubbish and ends up in landfill, there are small, there's a number of um, potentially hazardous elements in them. So in the old um, NICAD batteries, which most mobile phones these days actually use lithium iron, but in the NICAD batteries, cadmium's a heavy metal, so it's like lead, and so it's not a great thing to get out to the environment because it can have um, impacts on both human life and also um, the environment itself. So if it goes into landfill and in some of the old landfills which weren't managed properly, you can get a leachate. But actually, you know, it's, it's less of a risk here. It's more of a risk if they go across to developing countries and get dumped over there because then you have poorly managed um, landfill things. You have lots of small families and communities trying to recycle the materials in a very, um, you know, unsafe way and so that's really important that that doesn't happen so you know cadmium's one concern there's lead in some of the old in the circuit boards in the solder um, you know in the plastics you have um, brominated fire retardants so you might have to make sure that they are handled properly because you can actually recycle them and recover the materials out of them and reuse them like cadmium you can actually recover 99 percent pure and reuse but it's important it's done in an environmentally friendly way and in a safe way too 
Okay, so it's a good thing then that most of us seem to just throw them in the in the drawers yeah, at this stage. Yes, and actually the market research since we've launched the program shows that that's actually um, more people are keeping them and less people are throwing them into landfill. It's dropped from 9% to 4% of people say they threw their previous mobile phone in the bin, which is a really positive step for the program. Um, one of our key outcomes was to reduce what was going to landfill and some audits we're doing at the moment at um, various landfill sites show that they're not coming through at all, which is really good news. So everyone's getting the message and, and more people are, are more aware about the program and, and that they can recycle. So we're heading in the right direction. It's a really good step. Okay, well, let, let's continue with this. Tell us about Mobile Master. When, when did it start? The, um, the mobile phone recycling, uh, the mobile phone industry started their recycling program actually back in late 98, 99 um, in response to the battery issue primarily because at that stage you probably get two batteries per handset and so there was a big concern to address that. Um, and so we set up a collection network then and it was uh, originally promoted as... Um, it had a different slogan then, I can't remember what it was, but anyway. <laughs> uh, um, so we, it started back then, but in December 05 we rebranded and relaunched it as Mobile Muster because one of our biggest challenges has been trying to um, get the community to understand this is actually an industry-funded program that's voluntarily funded by the industry. They actually raise money um, internally by paying a levy on every handset that's shipped into Australia before it's sold. So it's what you would call a, um, an advanced recycling fee. And each manufacturer and the service providers, um, like Optus and Telstra, they all contribute a small percentage per a small amount of money per each phone brought in. And that helps run the program. There's no um, government regulation. Um, there's no government funding to the program. So it's, it's purely an industry fund program. And it's run as a, a not-for-profit program. So the idea is that all the funds are then used to recoup, recoup um, the phones to educate the community about how the process, process operates. And also to talk about, you know, to ensure that the recycling processes we do are to the highest environment, international standards. Mm -hmm. Well, well, just tell us how it works, because I know you've brought some uh, oh, okay. examples All in right. here today. So, for us. so the, the, the main mechanism for recycling is you actually take your phones to one of our major mobile phone retailers. All the major brands, Telstra, Optus, Vodafone 3, um, Virgin Mobile, all phones, Crazy Johns and Phone Zone participate. And you'll either find, we've got this tube at the back here, yep. um, in store, or also you have one of these boxes in store. And it's really quite simple. You just take your phone, pop it in there. You can take your phone, your batteries, chargers, accessories, anything to do with mobile phone components. There's a little list on the back here explaining um, what you can recycle. And then what happens is the retailers, once they've collected a certain volume, will call us. We come and pick it up. Um, it, they then go to our recycler in Melbourne where they're sorted, um, where they're dismantled into the various components. So you'll, 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 you'll take off the casings, you'll pull out the batteries, you'll pull out the circuit boards. Um, you, so you dismantle all of that and sort it into the different components. So you have plastics, metals, you'll have three different um, battery types, circuit boards, chargers, and then they all then go off to different paths. So the, um, the plastics, for instance, go get shredded and go to a local manufacturer down the road who uses them in, to make fence posts. Mm -hmm. So what's really good is the, the plastics from the mobile phones are being combined with, say, plastics from computers and um, chargers and all the rest of it to make fence posts. Uh, the circuit boards and the batteries all get shipped off to South Korea where we have very specialist recyclers there who recover, for instance, in the circuit boards you have gold, copper, silver and lead. And in the uh, batteries you have cadmium, nickel, goes into stainless steel, um, cobalt um, and all of those elements come back. So what we find is about 90% of the materials in the phones are being recovered and reused. And what's um, some preliminary work we've done is that by reusing those mobile phone um, materials and substituting them for raw materials, you're actually avoiding potentially up to 90% of the greenhouse gas emissions that would have been emitted if you had used raw materials. So using gold from a circuit board rather than gold from the ground is basically a, a simple way to, you know, save energy, reduce greenhouse gas emissions and, yeah, great positive app result. Yeah, certainly. So, so with that um, small percentage, that 10% that, that can't be recycled, yep. what, what happens to that then? Uh, it, it essentially um, is used, it goes into landfill and it would be in a fairly inert thing. What we find is um, in the charges, they'll go through a shredding, they'll pull out the copper from the wire, 
they'll get the circuit board um, and they'll get as much plastic from it. But you will get where you can't actually separate all of the plastic from metals. So that's the sorts of things that will end up in landfill. Yeah. Right, very interesting. Rose Reed, Recycling Manager at Mobile Master. We've got plenty more to ask you about, so just stay with us. We will be back after the break with more with our guest today, Rose Reed from Mobile Master. Stay with us. Let's return to our guest today, Rose Reed, Recycling Manager at Mobile Master. Rose, we were just speaking there about the byproducts that can yep. be made from recycled mobile phones. Just, just take us through these in more detail, because some are quite astounding, actually. Oh, it's amazing what you can use. I mean, there's a, a complexity of materials in a mobile phone. If you just stop and think about it, there's all sorts of metals and plastics in there, and each of those can easily be recovered and reused. So earlier on, I mentioned the fence posts, and what you'll find is they're actually being sold around Australia um, through the Cyclone brand as composite plastic fence posts. And a fencing, um, you know, horse studs in the Hunter Valley, being used along walkways, down in Melbourne and so you know a really great product excellent quality you know um, so it's it's really good to see that happening but some of the other interesting products you know gold you know you think what happens to gold it can be used in an industrial purpose but also it can be used as jewelry and I mean we, we partnered with um, Nick Cerrone last year just to highlight the type of gold you, you know how the materials can be reused in a jewelry context um, you know the amount of gold you recover from one ton of mobile phones is the same as mining 110 tonnes of gold ore. So, yeah, wow, so the, and the yield... the price of gold. I know, I know. But, so, I mean, unfortunately, it's not a great money maker for the program. But, I mean, the point is the yield is very high. It's an efficient way to recover and reuse those resources. And, I mean, that's what recycling's all about. It's recap, reusing the resources and putting them back into play. And so we're not depleting our natural resources. It's a really great win-win for everyone. It's good for, you know, business. It's good for the environment. It's very important. Um, some of the others, the cadmium goes back into batteries, nickel, stainless steel, pots and pans, all sorts of great things. You know, all the casings on the batteries are nickel. Um, and so it's quite fascinating. I actually went to see our recyclers in Korea and um, just to see the battery processing and, and how they manage to recover all this is quite phenomenal. Yeah. It's, it's really good and it, it's, it's quite high tech too. Um, and, you know, there are a few issues environmentally in terms of when you're burning plastics, making sure it's burned at the right temperature because otherwise you can have dioxins or furans being released, which aren't good. Um, so it's great to see the, the you know, advanced procedures being put in place and, and careful monitoring of the program. Now, companies and businesses can actually organise their own muster, can't they? Just, just tell us a bit about oh, that. It's really simple. Um, all you have to do is go to our website, mobilemuster.com.au, go into Organise a Muster in the Get Involved section, type in your details, and we'll provide you a kit. It's quite simple. So we've got the, the mobile phone you know, recycling box. Get one of those. We've got some brochures, um, stickers, and, and all sorts of really useful promotional material. Mm -hmm. and, and simply just, you know, it's about engaging your staff. It's a great green initiative. It's a great way to get people involved in doing something simple. All they have to do is bring their old phones in from home mm -hmm. one day. You know, you could do it around World Environment Day coming up in June or National Recycling Week or, or anything like that. It's a great green initiative. Um, it's a free service. All of the materials are provided for free. When you've done your muster, what we call it, um, we'll come and collect the phones and, and get them recycled. And we can provide a report about, you know, what proportion of materials were recovered and, and what that means in terms of, um, you know, environmental benefits. Great. OK. Yeah. And the, the sachets that you've got oh, as well. Oh, OK. Lee. So, yeah. So, what, so our primary collection method has been, you know, using the box or the recycling tube. But a new thing we're trialling um, to make it even simpler and more convenient for mobile phone users is this um, satchel here, yeah. which is being introduced um, into mobile phone packs. It's a trial we're doing at the moment. So hopefully over the next couple of months people will find this, this satchel in the in their phone packs. Yep. In the past, in the last, just before Christmas, there was a mailing label as well yep. that we did um, that helps so people can put their take the new phone out of the box, put their old phone in the box, stick the label on. And you can actually download this off the website as well. So if you can't drop them off at the local retailer then here's another great easy option. And it's really important for any recycling program to be successful. It's actually making it very simple and convenient for people because, you know, we've all spent a lot of time shopping and finding stuff, but when we want to get rid of stuff, we want to keep it as quick and simple and as easy as possible. Definitely. We've looked at the, the business structure of, of Mobile Master already, but um, it's obviously not for profit, so all the, the funds that you uh, make... Uh, I guess from selling off the the mobiles. Is no, that how no. It works? The, way, the way it works is we actually raise funds on the phones being brought into the country before 
So, um, like, uh, the handset manufacturers report every month yep. as to how many handsets they've shipped into the country for sale. And on each of those, they pay an advance recycling fee. Mm -hmm. And similarly, the Telstra, Optus, Vodafone contribute a as contrib contribute some monies on each of those handsets based on their market share. Mm -hmm. So they pay the money up front on, and on phones brought in to Australia. So it's very much an extended producer responsibility program. So if you... So what you're doing is you're saying, OK, I'm going to park X amount of dollars here to recover those phones once they've finished their useful life, mm -hmm. as opposed to dealing with it at the final end when people are handing them in. So it's a really good way. It's a stable way to run the program. You have a good, secure source of revenue. Yep. Um, and it enables us to plan ahead, which is really good, as opposed to, say, being funded on what comes back in. You know, so it's actually very good. We don't generate any revenue from the sale of the materials. That's actually handled by our... We, we subcontract our recycling out to a company called MRI, mm -hmm. and they then deal with the third-party recycling, and so they manage that sort of risk at that end for us. Oh. But we are... But for instance, recycling batteries, you have to pay for that. It's not something that's going to generate a huge revenue. If it was generating a huge revenue, you probably wouldn't need Mobile Master in yeah. the first place. <laughs> exactly. And, and just looking at, at, what, at your role in the business then, it, it's to generate publicity for the program? It, overall, managing the program. So there's a number of areas. There's, there's managing the relationships with our partners, with our shareholders. So mm -hmm. that's the handset manufacturers, Nokia, Motorola, Vodafone, Optus, all of those people. It's engaging the community and educating the consumers about how they can recycle their phones and where they can recycle their phones. Yeah. Really basic stuff like that. And, and then also managing our relationships on, make, on the recycling um, and the call centres and, and all of those other aspects of day-to-day -day program management. Is it hard to get the, the um, mobile makers on board initially? Was, was that hard? Oh, um, no. I mean, the, that's one great thing about... The telecommunications industry is very positive and very proactive in dealing with these sorts of issues, unlike, say, um, some of the other electronic industries. They came on board right from the beginning, from 1998, and so I've always been very proactive in supporting the program. So, so in, in that sense, they've been very proactive. You know, if... If you look at, say, the computer or the television industry, you know, they're struggling to get more than 50% of, the, of their players involved, whereas we have over 90%. And so that's why we can run a voluntary program. That's why you don't need regulation, is that you have got the engagement and support, um, both financially and, you know, business-wise. Yeah. Um, now, just looking at the, uh, what the mobile makers get out of it, I guess, is it, is it the kudos of, of having the, uh, I guess, environmental tag there, that they, they are helping to, to recycle uh, their product? It, there's a number of reasons. A, they, they really acknowledge that they have a responsibility um, for their product environmentally from for the whole life cycle of the product, from its design right through to its end use and disposal. Um, so that's important. But yes, there's obviously a lot of um, uh, benefits to the brand and the reputation of being an environmentally responsible business. Mm. And I mean, more and more so an issue. Definitely. All right, now it's time for the in-business top ten questions. I know you've been just waiting for this. Oh, yes. <laughs> if we could ask, what, what was your first job? My first job? Uh, I was a tutor at the University of New England in Geography and Environmental Studies. What was your worst job? Don't have one. Oh, cool. I'm very lucky. lucky. I've yeah. had some great jobs. <laughs> the biggest challenge you face in your current business? It's actually making sure that the, the community understands that this is an industry-funded program. Yeah. Biggest mistake you've made? Oh, probably sharing too much information with the journalist. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that one. <laughs> What's your greatest competitor, I guess? We don't have a competitor. Our biggest challenge is actually making sure that mobile phones don't get dumped into developing countries, but they're actually they're disposed of responsibly. Um, your uh, biggest success? I think in my previous job at Clean Up Australia was actually bringing together the major supermarket chains together on the, the green bag campaign and saying no to plastic bags. Greatest role model? Oh, I have lots, actually. I've got... You know, I was trying to... I have lots of mentors and there's some really... There's found some really good ones in the telco industry, people like Hilary Milne from Alcatel. Lucid. There's a whole range of great people I've worked with who've inspired me in lots of different ways. So I'm not non-committal on that one. OK, then. We're, we're going to have to leave it there, though. So you've got your top eight questions today. <laughs> Rose Reed from uh, Mobile Master, thank you so much for coming in today. And uh, thank you also for joining us on In Business.